We are live. We got sound, Paul? Yeah, we got sound. Mic check. There it is. All right. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing? Thank you all for dropping by on today's podcast. We will be talking with the director of Sweetwater Guy School, Corey Koff. We are going to be talking about guiding and how to get started. Listen, and from personal experience, I was able to go and attend to Sweetwater Guy School. And it was a great school that I came across and easily accessible to civilians as well as veterans. 
which is one of the major reasons of why I wanted to push out this content. On this segment, we will be talking about how you can apply for the school and how to uh, and who to reach to get started. And I present you now, Corey Koff. I mean, two seconds, switch the scene real quick. There you have it. Corey Koff, how are you hey, doing today? Going? Good, good, good. Uh, it's been a... It's great to see you. It's It's been a long time in the making for this podcast. So I'm really happy. I'm really happy to, uh, to, to see you today. And um, thank you for uh, for uh, making this possible as well and taking your... Uh, your uh time off to do this as well so um quick question can you tell us a bit about yourself and what got you started with sweetwater guy school well as you mentioned i'm the full-time director of the sweetwater guy school which means um this time of year i'm handling all the office uh office work and getting students enrolled but i'm also the on-site director and, and guiding every day out there at the school and, uh, and we run a week-long guide training program on the Bighorn River, uh, South Central Montana, and um, pack a ton of fun information into that week. Uh, as you can attest to, I'm sure we'll talk more about that. Yes. And as far as how I, 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 I did attend guide school in 2007, um, was uh, looking to uh, get my foot in the door with some guiding uh, out west. Didn't really have a a spot in mind, but I came to the Bighorn River myself and attended the school and, and had one of the, the best weeks of my life. Um, ended up getting hired by the company to go uh, work at one of their lodges in Alaska. So I, I spent a lot of years um, guiding for Sweetwater up in Alaska and instructing at the guide school. And then um, a few years ago, this job came open as the full-time director and, and I really jumped at it. It's um, it's uh, it's what I really within all the guiding I've gotten to do. This is this is my favorite, and um, and uh, it's nice, and I get to meet meet uh, folks like yourself, and um, and uh, get to know you, and and uh, do these podcasts. So yeah, that, it's worked out well. That is awesome. No, that is uh, I had a great experience out there. That's for sure. You know, and it's uh, and it's awesome to hear you have that much experience as well you know and to be able to uh work for where you uh, for the company that you that you started at you know yeah. so it, it's really cool to uh know that because i mean this to me it's opened a lot of um a lot of doors you know and opportunities especially after from the time that i i started i started the, the school to the time that i ended i learned a lot and a, a lot of doors opened up for me afterwards you know yeah. So, and it's cool that you guys have such a huge network as well, you know, and not just for just civilians, but uh, as well as veterans, because it, it definitely yeah. I, I was sweating at one point. Remember, I kept calling you. I was like, yeah. look, I don't know what's going on with the VA, but I don't even know if I'm going to make it there and my flights in a, in 24 hours. And you were able to help me out with that, you know, so it, it's awesome to um to know that I can depend on, on, on a school that it's going to get me in the right path, you know. And get me there, you know, because you you guys helped me out a lot. So, and um, so from from a veteran standpoint, you know, I feel like pushing out this agenda and letting vets know that their schools like Sweetwater Guy School and among other guiding schools as well, right, to train you in something that I I developed a passion for. I don't know if if anyone out there feels the same way, you know, like I do, but I can speak for myself, correct? And so I know I met um Matt out there. And he had just gotten done um, hunting guy school as well. So before arriving at Sweetwater, and I believe it's imperative to like let fellow veterans uh, know how they can have access to schools like like these through using your uh, veteran benefits. So just know like there's help out there for us to be able to attend schools like Sweet uh, Sweetwater Guy School, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's a great point. Myself and a lot of the other schools really to work on because um i've i've found through my position you know as the one that enrolls people uh students like yourself with the va that a lot of people just don't know that they can use their their benefits for programs like this and there's the, there's a lot of non-traditional programs like ours um that pay you know the full full tuition for the cost of the week um and beyond so um no it's an awesome uh, it's an awesome part of our program I, um our, our our numbers fluctuate, but we're we're seeing about thirty to thirty five percent of our uh, our yearly um, student body be veterans using their GI Bill benefits, and uh, a lot of them are like yourself that are looking to go 
um, pursue a guide job, um, travel, you know, um, uh, see what's out there. A lot of them are looking maybe down the road and post retirement. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, and this is vets and, and civilians both, are are just looking for uh, a chance to um, to learn to be a better angler, more self sufficient angler, and also. Uh, you touched on it, understanding, you know, it's it's powerful for us to see the benefit of, of getting people out on the water for, for uh, a lot of health reasons. It, it is. It is very power, powerful. You know, to me, it, uh, it, it changed my life, you know, from when I initially started a year ago to now. I, when I started, I just wanted to catch fish. But by the end of this year, I'm trying to guide yeah. people, you know, so it's been it's been such a blessing because the traveling portion has been my favorite, you know, it got me, I mean, you yeah. cannot go wrong, you know, by going to a guy school. I mean, a school like, like, uh, the guys, uh, the school that you guys have to offer. Right. And, and catch yeah. fish. Even, even if you don't want to become a guy, just go out there, use your benefits. Oh, yeah. You know, I loved it. I loved every yeah. single minute of it. Help but, help but learn something there. And I think your, your week was a great example of the dynamic of most of our weeks, which is all over the place. There were people there that are, that are, um, uh, Trevor up in, uh, or out in Michigan's guiding, you know, I know. um, Jackson's going to do a tour of, uh, of Montana to make a move with his family, potentially, you know, all this, um, you know, uh, Matt's up in Alaska working right now. And then some folks that were just, you know, using that time to, to get their skills honed and maybe, yes. um, uh, you know, work for a, a, a nonprofit uh, group as a guide or something like that. So it's really all over the place. And we like to, you know, we have people from every um, background, you know, life dynamic, but also every skill level. Agreed. Um, there's not a, there's not a prerequisite to come to the program. You're just, um, as long as you're open to learn and you're going to get better at everything over the course of the week. Yeah. And, and I think that's what blew my mind because, uh, when you first introduce yourself, I know, or I think it was the second day, you know, of the school. I think you mentioned something like I've had, I have, I've had students that, you know, they had no, it was the first time fly fishing in general. Yeah. And I was like, wow. So, I mean, that's awesome because it really does teach you how to become a better angler. Even if you're yeah. just touching the waters, like you can't go wrong with just improving. Correct. So it's yeah. just, it's, it's an yeah. awesome that's opportunity. Those people potentially not looking to go guide. You know, uh, I don't think there's a better learning format than, you know, we, you, you remember day one, we teach you your knots. Well, well, if you get your knots dialed over the course of the week, you're just fishing more, you know, yes. the water more, landing more. Fish. Um, so that, that, all that stuff. And that's example is, is this progression um, that helps you become, you know, more self-sufficient. You know, we joke at this class that, you know, the blood knot's the reason people hire guys, you know, they get to that <laughs> point in their right. fishing career and then they, they don't want to, they don't want to learn anymore. That's great. And our boats is fishing guys. Um, but if you can get past that, you know, that hurdle and learning to row, row the boat and learning to read the water and, and all those factors. And I mean, the list goes on and on of it does. what we pack into a week out there. Yeah. And we really do our best as adaptable as possible, you know, meaning, you know, the person that doesn't have a lot of fishing experience, or maybe they've never uh, nymphed a bigger river in the West, you know, or thrown big streamers out there, things like that. You know, we're able to adapt our teaching to, to them um, against somebody else that maybe has a has a better all around skill set. And, right. you know, this this is my chance to rave about structures that I get to work with um, those um those um, guides are, are the best of the best and it's the Agreed. skill levels obviously above and beyond, but their, their passion for it and their desire to teach others, um, you know, and they kind of look at it as I want to, I want to teach somebody the way um, to bring them along to be somebody that I want to work with out on the river, you know, yes. and, and so it's a little bit of paying it forward. Um, but yeah, that's my shout out to the crew there. They, they do an amazing job. They, they did a great job. Look, and if you guys have not checked the new film, make sure you guys check out the new film, my, uh, my guiding experience, my fishing guide experience. It's live in 4K, so you guys don't have to watch it on 720p on, on the YouTube channel. All right, uh, click it. It's, it's, a, it's my whole experience of the school 
out there in montana the guy the instructors were amazing you know what i mean i had a blast and i learned a lot and i had a, i have a couple scenes where they're doing their job and you guys will get to see how they do their job you know so i hope you guys uh watch that film and um quick question uh so what is the process for getting enrolled um on the veteran aspect right like using your your va what is the process that you can take um as a veteran to be able to attend your school that's a great question and you can attest to this um, don that we've we've really tried to streamline it and make it as simple as possible and a big part of my job i'm i'm what they call an seo so it's school certifying official in any college or university or anybody that takes the gi bill has has one so that's what i do um but basically um you select a date uh, we have classes coming up this fall so you, you're coming on september 3rd to 9th and um i send you a a, a pre-trip packet and we have a link in there that basically just filling out your your basic information um, and then we need you to apply for what's called a stoe that's your certificate of eligibility and that basically just shows um myself and the and the school and the va that you have enough benefits remaining to attend um they still do those by mail actually so that can take a couple weeks um but i can still get enrolled in in the meantime if if uh if we can uh i can look you up and make sure you have the time and then um the only add on to that is is i'm sure you remember you need to obtain your transcripts that the yes. they ask for us to have all those on file so that's transcripts from military service they call those your asts or joint services transcripts depend on the branch of the military um and then um any transcripts from academic uh, uh uh time you had you know if you went to school on your gi bill okay um and that's it i get you enrolled and and uh the va on most cases um uh, it's called the uh, chapter 33 post 9 11 gi bill benefits they um they pay the school directly um you know upon it up, upon attendance um and that's that's really it. it it's pretty much that simple um and there's a lot of you know there's a lot of resources that you know i won't get into now but i can i'll send students you know links to to uh va websites and contacts to help them with that process if they've never used their gi bill before um but um you know whether it's our school or you know continuing education is a wonderful thing um if you have those benefits um you know like we started off talking about being able to use them for programs like this and there's um you know you mentioned matt he went to a uh that was like a five-week hunting guiding more focused yes camp, and they do a waterfowl school and well, i know people that are doing um horseback riding stuff uh, battle building classes right. derby, all kinds of things that just fall under that traditional um, um umbrella but also are really great skill sets to have as a it is as an outdoor professional and outdoor guy yes um so yeah that's the process i mean i and Tim pick up you had an issue you know where you were in between that montgomery gi bill and the and yes 9 11 but you you easily switched it over and mm -hmm. got it worked out and and one thing i tell people is if you have if you have enough benefits for me meaning um you know you haven't used up all your gi bill down to the last month um, but if you have enough of those benefits remaining, um, my job is, is to not let any of that paperwork get in the way of you attending the school. Um, so there's right. often, it's not often, but um, I'm finalizing enrollment because there were issues well after the class um, took place. So um, the, the VA is really adamant about that. They, they have a lot of resources for me as the SCO to, to make that stuff happen as well. Makes sense. That um, yeah. I, I tell you, uh, it was awesome to I find out to be to I mean to just to find out that I can use my VA benefits to do a lot of these schools. I mean, I I, did, I didn't even know that you can you can uh attend like um, pilot pilot school. You know, like oh, they yeah. cover yeah. stuff like that, and oh, it. it whole, uh, no, uh, no, it's it's pretty amazing. I mean, and like I said, it's um, there's even programs post know taking a class like ours there's one called the veteran readiness and employment program which you know it's case by case but you can apply for funding to help you in in starting a a, a business as far as gear and equipment and and that is awesome further training right um, and, uh, you know, the, that's one i'm just an open book with as far as trying, trying to connect people to get them 
uh, to get them uh, just knowing that that stuff's available resource. Real quick, just FYI for any veteran out there that did not know this, I just found out myself. If you got out, out of the service after um, January 1st, 2013, and you have the post 9-11, they have this, uh, I guess they changed it to where you, it, it's called the forever, not, uh, the forever 9-11, something like that, right? You have it for the rest of your life. I don't know if you know anything about that. I just found out about it myself. Yeah. Basically, the, the people I'm seeing in that age range, there used to be a, a your benefits will end date on those COEs, and that no longer exists unless you're you know you're before that before that time. Yes. Um, so it gives you it gives you a lot of time. And like I touched on, and this is veterans and and non veterans as well. You know, we get mm -hmm. a lot of folks that are planning on pursuing a guy job, um, but it might be five years down the road, you know, post retirement from the military or yes. their civilian job, whatever it might be. Um, we had a fifteen year old kid in our summer classes. So he's, you know, a few years away from guiding, but <laughs> that is true. Get there. He, yeah, he's rock solid. Um but yeah, our our resource and something I think we'll talk about more is is we do a lot in the, the job placement side of things, you know, to help students um um, get their foot in the door and find right. their first job. So, you know, our resources are available in five years if that's your your program. And you know, fall, winter, spring, I'm doing a lot of networking um, students and outfitters, and it's a mix. It's people that came through the class that year, or uh, or came through a few years prior and are, are looking to get their start. Right. Um, I have another question for you, Corey. So. I mean, just with the school and in, in general, right? Um, besides uh, the enrollment, what are some of the subjects you guys uh, focus on the seven day course from day one? Uh, that's a great question. I'll try to keep it short because we pack a lot into a week. Yeah. <laughs> as, as you remember, you know, uh, one thing we do every week fly tying class, um, teaching everybody how to tie uh, the flies that are working on the on the river that week, but they're also good patterns to you know, to start the process of, yes. of uh, becoming a fly tire, which is an important being a fly angler, uh, we feel, is knowing, knowing how to tie those patterns. Um, and um, uh, a big thing we, you know, a, a real you know, overhanging uh, uh, teaching uh, at the guide school, I'm blocking on the right way to say it, is is the boating aspect of things. So a lot of time on, on the drift boats and yes. giving everybody chance to drive the jet boat and see how that operates and and as you know somebody might be more interested in they're going to go guide somewhere that's all rafts or drift boats right maybe they focus on that a little bit more versus maybe alaska where i live in oregon we have a lot of jet boating on the river so um but that's every day you know um, gotcha um, the other important stuff we put in the mix is the knot tying you know getting to be competent at your knots uh, we have a casting instructor come in and, and does what I think is an amazing class. It was, you know, yes. Um, back at the lodge. And that's really, you know, for a beginner angler, that's going to teach them how to cast better. But for somebody with a little more experience, it's really going to show them some tips and tricks for teaching other people how to cast. Um, you know, reading water, fishing different techniques. I think, again, you can agree over, you know, it didn't take, it didn't take you long. You're seeing the same you know, 20 miles of river. Right. You know, over yes. The week, it didn't take you long to figure out probably where a fish is going to sit. And you can translate that to, um, to other rivers that you go fish. Um, a fun one is the entomology, you know, learning the bugs and yes. picking up some rocks and seeing what's crawling around and being able to, you know, you use that to, to match the hatch and pick out what insects are out there. There's um, definitely big bugs out there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are. And there's a lot of them those little ones yes um, all the midges stuff. uh it keeps going you know get you certified in your first aid and cpr class which every state that's a requirement that you have to right. guide and also just a good a good refresher to have um and uh at morning meetings we talk about conservation which is um you know wildly important as far as what we're doing out there as fishing guides to try to protect those resources um, job search techniques, you right? Know, I think that will benefit to a lot of people. I always get great 
piggyback off of that and and kind of wrapping it all up at the end of the week with a just kind of a chalk talk about um, how to approach your first season as a guide um, or kind of ingraining yourself into a, a community of, of fishing guides and, and folks on the river. So, um, and then we, we always tell people, you know, the, there's a pretty set curriculum to what we do there, but I think the, the people that get the most out of the week are just asking lots of questions about, you know, what do I do when this happens or, or right. you know, scenario based teaching. Okay. That's also the honest classroom you're on a boat on a river in montana so that, right. that part's pretty cool too. <laughs> your personal office right there you know it doesn't yeah. get any better than that question from the uh, a subscriber from the channel so uh indian on the fly asks what happens if you're not good at tie fly uh tying flies do you fail <laughs> you know you're not you're not gonna fail but i guarantee you if you stick to it you're gonna get better and that really applies to everything that, that we're teaching you know, we definitely have a priority list. You know, the the not tying is is um is probably the main priority. Um, but you're uh, you're gonna we have an exit interview at the end of each week, and yep. uh, and we're honest. Right. If you're looking to do a guide job. We're gonna tell you, okay, you need to you need to work on this and uh, and um you know as far as the the fly tying, it's it's fun. It's fun to potentially come to guide school and catch. A fish on a fly you tied for the first time and that's agreed really rewarding yes it's also motivating better and better flies and and uh, and then start messing around with it and tweaking the pattern i have another question from another subscriber jerry franks how can i get info on class if you can elaborate a little bit more unless you can answer that Corey. yeah uh just just on uh scheduling or Pretty much anything is um is email or give me a call um uh, i'm pretty sure paul's got my email address on the on the screen it's corey c-o-r-e-y i do sweetwatertravel.com um you can look us up online our our parent company is sweetwater travel we're, we're livingston based and uh if you go to the website uh, and click on the guide school there uh, my info is all over the page um and just so everybody knows we've got openings in our classes starting uh, let's see we start sunday uh september 3rd um and we run all the whole month of september and i've got some good openings in these fall classes if anybody's interested yep jerry frank says he said very interested in the school how can i get info on it and you just answered that question uh just know yeah, that give me an email jerry I've... his email is on the screen corey at sweetwatertravel.com you can you can uh message him as well on instagram at at sweetwater travel the information is on the screen guys um i yeah. appreciate you guys asking all these questions as well and i yeah, do keep them coming that part's fun it, it is lauren uh lauren moore i hope i didn't say your last name wrong my apologies um can anyone go to guy school absolutely yes we have uh like i said no prerequisites no tests no no skill level that you need to have as long as you have a, a willingness to, to have a good time which is pretty easy and and to learn you're gonna you're gonna get better uh over the course of the week for sure and that's one of the funnest parts of the job for for myself and i think the other instructors would agree is just watching everybody's improvement over the course of the week and um we're really adamant that you know to be a fishing guide if that's your end goal yeah there there is a skill set that you need to have but it's a lot simpler than people think um it's really about taking care of folks one safety first and right. showing them a good time and being able to do that when the weather conditions aren't ideal and when the fish deal so um that that stuff's not related to your your fishing skill but you know um i've seen it firsthand some folks that were pretty green coming into the school got a good basis at the class you know at the end of the week it's only a week and they just went and got after it you know fishing all the time and rowing different rivers and taking advantage of all those um relationships that they formed at the class yes and um and they got you know they got their foot in the door sometimes that's you know going to work at a fly shop uh, really the ins and outs of, of learning you know a river and the bug life and how the operations work or you know support staff at a lodge um, there, there's so many options. We have had, you know, tons of students go right in head first to a guide job after the class. So that is awesome. 
So yeah, great question. No, no prerequisites really are adamant about that. And I also, um, as far as getting to the class, we like to make sure everybody knows, you know, the, the, uh, the cost of the class is all inclusive. So your, your lodging, your food for the week, um, awesome. I don't want anybody to feel like they have to break the bank, you know, gearing up for the class. So we have a, a packing list of things that you want to bring, but it's, you know, you don't need to go, you know, drop a ton of money um, just to get out there. A lot of it is, is learning, you know, how the, you know, what the guides are actually using as far as gear and equipment. And, and that was going to be my, uh, one of my questions as well, like materials or equipment that people will need to bring to attend the class. I get yeah, it's pretty, pretty simple. You know, one is we do start off with a five time pass. So, you know, you can tie a lot of flies. We, you saw it. We leave all the, all the vices and all the materials out. Um, every yes. evening, most evenings, you know, there's no tying some patterns. I'm actually putting together my big fly tying order for, for fall classes. I need to get, you know, some more materials in and, and we have a lot of stuff. So, you know, you probably want to have a couple dozen, you know, of the patterns, um, that, that I recommend for, for each session, um, but you'll get to tie the rest of them. But basically it's Montana fishing license, um, chest waders, wading boots, a uh, fly rod. We, we recommend a, a floating line with a five or a six weight. Um, Got it. You could, uh, uh, a lot of people like to have, and I, I put, put it in a packing list, you know, maybe one, one size up rod. Maybe if you're fishing a six weight floating line, maybe have a seven with a sink tip for your streamer fishing. Um, but it's not a necessity. Um, and then it's really just your, your tackle for the week, you know, leaders, tip it, split shot indicators, you know, we're, we're, uh, the Bighorn's an awesome river because it, it kind of throws everything at you depending on, on time of year. It's always pretty consistent, Agreed. a good, good river to nymph, which is a great technique to learn to, you know, to teach people and get people into fish. But we also have great windows to dry fly and, and streamer fishing. I love dry fly fishing out there. It was yeah, awesome every, time. Everybody does. Me. Yes. And, uh, yeah, it's it's fun when it happens, and it just you know you can't always predict it, but there's some good regular hatches on the big horn. I was so, yeah, as far as gear and equipment. Sorry, um, no. on that, it's your personal. Gotcha. You know, we have, um, as you can attest, the lodge is pretty darn nice. You know, it's it is double occupant rooms. Everyone's got their own bathroom and and a big main lodge that. And it's and it's a co-ed school, correct? Yeah, women yeah. and men can so we, go. Yeah, we have a lot of women class. Um, in the summer, we we've, we've been doing a women's only week uh, in in the summer months, and um, and then uh, some weeks are just you know, um, uh, yeah, it's co-ed. Okay, I have uh, I have a, I have two questions. One is from Trevor. Trevor, I'm I'm not I'm not going to ask your question real quick. I will, I will, uh, I will in, in like a couple minutes. Um, Indiana on the fly asked, do they do any Euro? I'm guessing you're nymphing. Yeah. Um, yes. It's, it's, uh, I won't say that we have a class on it, but there's a lot of things on the river. We don't have a class on, um, uh, there's times and places on the Bighorn where it's an incredibly effective tactic. Um, but I think most people that fish that style of fishing would agree that it's it's not the best tactic drifting. Um, you're probably going to get your messages blowing up over my comments because <laughs> I love I love your own nymphing. You know, basically we're trying to simulate your average guest, which tends to be a beginner. You know, right. from it. we do a lot of weight. So, so the answer is you know definitely bring a rod and, and it's fun. I've had I've had students that were pretty darn dialed on dialed in on it actually teaching it to other students and that's a great that's right. a really fun dynamic of the guide school and i love learning different rigging all the instructors would agree with that so you know we're it's it's guide school it's not fishing school so we're, we're not always you know doing the technique that's we want to make sure everybody's adept and practicing at everything but i totally recognize that there's a lot of there's a lot of rivers all over the country and all over the world where that's that's your go-to um and um and uh we definitely we definitely touch on it and we're probably doing that more and more as it's gaining more and more popularity awesome and it is true i mean look i took my euro nymphing rod out there and i think i used it about a handful uh, maybe like twice right because i was yeah, yeah. that that water was moving the flow the flow of that water was moving so fast 
you know yeah. it, it was kind it was very challenging i mean for me to just euro nymph out there i tried it a couple of times and then i just put it back down i grabbed my other rod you know now well, i think a little a couple of weeks after you were there and the water got really hot and it actually reversed because those fish were really packed into the edges of the river and that is where it would have been just just deadly you know um yes so you didn't have to get that it was hugging on on the grass it got that's really awesome really hot. Uh, we had a lot of rain in wyoming you know, uh, yes. late, late spring early summer um but it still fish well so we could, yes we were getting well, some nice fish so well my well my biggest thing was the amount of uh what was it weeds or it because yeah. That's what that's what kept messing me up. So I was just like, it, it's not worth it to me right now to just urinate this. Well, and that's, you know, that's the nature of the big horn. It is. Other tail Get this aquatic vegetation kind of breaks loose. And I've had people walk out and see the river and be like, I guess we're going somewhere else. You know, <laughs> but, um, I mean, you can catch a lot of fish. And also, you do. even more importantly, it's not about fish you catch at the night. Right. Table, but there were there were guide boats out the day around us with guests out, so it's not a it's not a determining factor to how do the rivers the rivers fish, and we just have to adjust a little bit. Right, like it's like adapt yeah. and overcome. I agree. Now, I like it. yes, and and now uh, Trevor Trevor asked, he said, can you talk a little bit about uh, the owners and how it was founded? Yeah, that's a great question. The owners of Sweetwater Travel are um, the Vermilion Brothers, Dan, uh, Jeff, and Pat, and and to this day they're still own um, and operate all these lodges. Um, they've got a, a pretty extensive network. I was lucky to work at one of their Alaska lodges. Now they have three up there and a few lodges in British Columbia. Um, they had one of the first um, operations in Mongolia where they're chasing Taiman and and um, Brazil and the Bahamas and, and then two lodges in Montana. Um, but they grew up, uh, you know, fishing and, and became fishing guides growing up in Montana. It's kind of easy to happen. Um, and then started this business. And, and along with another guy, Ron Meeks, who ended up becoming um, the original director of the guide school. And Ron was the one running the show and, and teaching the jet boat when I came to guide school uh, a while back. Um, and I still stay in touch with him he retired a few years ago uh anyway the four of them and some other you know uh guide friends were just talking about how they they got their start and there wasn't ever ever like a a consistent story you know it was right. i knew somebody or you know, i didn't you know i, I want to be a fishing guide but it wasn't there weren't as many opportunities where i live so i you know i moved out west things like that um so they decided to start this this training program um and um and it's really blown up i mean uh uh it was in the late uh i think 97 98 that they started so you know i i myself i mean this is my world but i'm constantly running into former guide school students in different locations that's awesome um, it's hard to go it's hard to go places you know, and, and some of them now are are owners and operators of lodges and fly shops so um and uh yeah you know to this day jeff vermilion handles all of our British Columbia operations and and he's actively up there for a good chunk of the season Pat Vermillion and another guy Scott Schumacher has been with Sweetwater for a really long time they handle all the Alaska stuff and um, those guys are all you know smack in the middle of the season right now and then Dan Vermillion kind of takes care of Montana and and Mongolia as far as you know they all they all you know do everything for the company but they each have kind of a focus um and it's not uncommon for those guys to roll through and you know they're they're it's a fun company to work for they've um i've, I've been really lucky to to have worked for them for a long time and they've been really good to me and, and i have a lot of friends that would say the same thing you know that that are that are involved um but you know as as far as they've gotten in this industry i always feel like um they're they're fishing guys at heart you know they love right they, they love getting out there on the water and they love they love this guide school to put out um, basically i think they would agree that when they started this they they wanted to start a program that would um would have uh, answered all the questions and all the mess ups they had the first year or two you know um and yes. giving them a little bit of insight into that as to how to approach your first season as a guy um 
and yeah, I'm, you know, this, this is where I might be a bad salesman, but you don't, you don't have to go to guide school to be a guide. Um, uh, more people don't do it, but I get a lot of feedback from people that have worked with former guide school students or, or from lodge managers and owners that look right. at our, our school to hire that the students that came through the guide school just had a, a little more information under their, under their, you know, in their tool belt, um, moving into that first season. And I think it also really shows people that you're, you know, you're dedicated to improving your skill set and, and right. honing your craft a little bit. It does. It, it really does. Um, and, and I also believe that like, I, I mean, everything happens for a reason, right? And I, I feel like just uh, for me, like in the guiding portion, uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, just, uh, I mean, I, I felt like it was quality. Uh, it was a quality school that I went to and I learned a lot and it opened doors from the, from, cause I stay there a week, uh, uh extra, yeah, yeah. you know, and I had, uh, uh, one of the guys from, uh, the owner of, that wasn't big yeah, no, it was not. <laughs> I had a, I had a trip with, uh, uh, yeah, Project yeah. Healing Waters yeah. and I went to a, a Freedom Ranch, um, a trip up there and I stayed for uh, another extra week. But I mean, from. Yeah, I, I did, and it was awesome. I mean, uh, the one of the gentlemen, the owners of the Big Hole um, Outfitters, I believe is called. You know, he gave me, I, I believe his name was Craig. I can't remember his last name, but he gave me his. I told him about Sweetwater, you know, and I told him I just had finished and everything. He's like, "Here you go, call me, call me after your trip and everything." So that was a huge yeah, opportunity, you know. Awesome. So it, awesome and it, it's and been it's awesome. Not, yeah, those stories are out there, like. That, that part's really cool and it's um it's a testament to you you know you're, yes. you're out there after it if people out there ever get a chance to fish with paul he's probably gotten better at fly fishing faster than anyone i've ever seen in in my life and that's because thank I, you i think you I, th I don't think you sleep I go fishing and think about fishing all the time if but yeah when you less than a year that was pretty cool um but yeah, I mean, this, this industry, like people are, um, people are, uh, all different backgrounds, but they, you know, generally they have the same mindset and that's right. we, love, we love getting out on the water and we love having a good time doing so. And, and we love, um, we love figuring out how to translate that to people that are out, you know, in our boat for the day. Okay. Real quick. Um, Jerry Frank says he will be contacting you, Corey. Awesome. So I'm that's your name. Yep, that's great to hear. And also, Jackson James said, "Outstanding week with you guys. Cannot thank Corey. Uh, can't thank Corey and the fellas enough. I read that wrong. Can't thank Corey and the fellas enough." He says, "Man, I'm I'm yeah. proud of you, Jackson. Keep grinding, man." All um, we're all guiding, um, we're all guiding on the Yellowstone and yes, and the Clark Fork and all over my. I'm still in contact with all of them and they're constantly sending like pictures yeah. of really big fish. I'm like, uh, I'm only catching little ones over here, but that's, that's how the East is. You know, I, I like, I love, I fell in love with Montana and, and I cannot wait to go back and do some more fishing out there. You know? Yeah. No, it's easy to happen. There's so many awesome places. to be, And that's what this whole thing does. It's, it's um, you know, you start off and, and it's, um, you know, figuring out how, how to get your foot in the door. And then it becomes this just amazing way to, uh, to go see places and, and meet yes. different people. Angie and Paul's blog said, naturally born. I will contest with that, Corey. Paul certainly eats and sleep and dreams fly fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Look, yesterday. She's got inside info. Yeah, she does. Yesterday, I, I, I was, I went today to VA. First of all, I went to Virginia to go fishing. I, I, I woke up at three to leave in the morning so last night I, I told myself i'm gonna go to sleep at eight i did go to sleep at eight i woke up at 10 and i never went back to sleep and then i was i was out on the water today slipping all over the place i think it's the excitement of fly fishing for me yeah, yeah. you know and i just I, I was like i my wife told me she was like you need to get sleep or you're just gonna be miserable tomorrow I mean, I wasn't miserable, but I, I'm telling you, I was slipping all over the place, looking like like uh, what's this? What's that guy's name? Jack Jack Sparrow. Oh man, it was it was it was a heck of a day. But 
I uh quick question. Um, so once the course is completed, I know you guys uh mentioned job placement, right? Um, I know you guys have a, a really big network of um to be able to place people and stuff. You did you did it with Matt, Matt, like we said earlier. Matt's in Alaska. Yeah. He's loving it, by the way. I keep in touch with him all the time. He's always sending out videos of the drone drone footage and stuff. It's awesome. And the amount of fish that's out there. Oh, my gosh. You know, so. They're seeing, you know, we would always say um, peak of the sockeye run was about uh, July 4th at the lodge. But yeah. They keep coming. And it sounds to me, I haven't, I haven't seen the numbers, but they're breaking the record sockeye number every year. And when you can see, like, from a float plane above, yeah. you know, those columns of fish coming up, it's, it's, it, it's spectacular. It really is. It blew my mind. He sent a little video of, like, uh, he put it, I guess, I'm guessing he put his GoPro in the water, and you could yeah, just yeah. see fish uh, on top of each other. I'm just like, oh, that is heaven right there. You know, so it was awesome. All those, those fish up in their eggs for too long, and then, you know, yes. it brings all these trailing and rainbow trout and char and dollies and all kinds of stuff into the mix. I think you were going to ask about the job search process. Is yes. That where you were going? Yes, I was. Um, yeah, so basically uh, have everybody fill out an application, um, you know, that's coming to the class. It's just, I, I send out a link. And it's really just a way for us to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. And uh, it's kind of dependent on time of year or when you're thinking of, of starting the process, but there's a spot on there for you to um, upload a, a resume and cover letter. Um, and then that's where I come in and I, I just help you, you tune it up uh, if it needs it uh, or whoever the, the student would be, uh, if it needs it for the, for the industry. You know, some people don't, don't realize that a lot of what it takes to be a fishing guide relates to other jobs that maybe they've had. Um, and um and we'll go back and forth and, you know, uh, I always tell people, this is my only, my only job. So right. you know, I'm a year round employee of the guide school. I'm doing a lot of that when I'm not on site um, guiding. And then um, basically, you know, I give you our list of lodges, outfitters, fly shops um, that have reached out looking to hire, a, uh, hire students out of our school every year. Um, and then it's on the student to start, you know, getting their resume and cover letter out there. And, um, and also, um, one morning meeting at the school, we talk about that topic and just things that, again, you might not think of to, to put onto your resume and being a little more specific about your fishing skills and, and, uh, places you've traveled and things like that. Um, Got it. and then, uh, you know, I've seen people get every manner of job, but you know, we're, we're trying to help you get your first job. And, and we have a motto that, that no first job's a bad job. Um, it's about getting that experience. Um, and like I said, we've had students go um, just jump right in to, to, to guiding. We also have quite a few operations that have um, um, that have their first year guides work in the fly shop for, for most of the first season. Um, and that's just a set training program. And then, you know, you close the shop doors and you go out and take the boat out and learn the river in the right. evenings and on your days off. So we've got... Um, Dude ranches, you know, I, I lump you know, a lot of these big ranches in and just call them dude ranches, but a lot of them are more fly fishing focused that hire, you know, guides every year. And um, Alaska is a, a big hiring pool up there. And, um, but we also have, have contacts and operations from, uh, you know, Georgia, North Carolina, um, you know, with tons of students, and, you know, guiding in the Great Lakes regions. We definitely have a hub in the, in the Rocky Mountain area. Uh, operations in Oregon and Washington, Arizona, New Mexico, Alaska. Um, and, um, you know, after a couple rough years for everybody, we're seeing more uh, more students get hired winter months um, to go guide in places like Patagonia and Chile. And that Australia. is awesome. You yeah, said, you so, said Ch so South America? Okay. You said South America as well? Yeah. That is awesome. Well, you know, it's these tropical, right. You know, a couple guides that work up in Alaska and then they go down and guide in you know southern uh, southern part of Chile uh, in the winter time because that season runs you know usually like late December through right. um, uh, March maybe in April. That is awesome. Yeah, just playing a, uh, 
I, I know. <laughs> it just keeps getting better. I love the traveling portion of this, you know. Um, now, just to wrap up things, you know, I think this to me it was a very important question for me to ask you. It's a, it's a, it's a personal question, you know, um, because you're very experienced. You have a lot of uh, experience behind behind you, so I think it, it. I think it's it's a perfect question to ask you. So, from an experienced person who has been doing this for a long time, what are some of the challenges? that people might face in the industry when doing this independently or working for someone else. I know you mentioned, we talked a, a while back how you used yeah, to do yeah. it independently. So. No, it's a, it's a great question I've done both sides of it. So speak to that a little bit. Um, there's no, there's no bad option. Um, but I would say that starting off as a, as a new guide, um, you know, if you're working as an independent guide, you, you do have to generate your own business. You know, so we're maybe getting involved with a with a fly shop or an outfitter that's doing that side of things. And I've seen people do that and that's it. And, you know, that's what they do and right. work for that, that company. You know, that'd be the example of my time in Alaska. Um, in my world of guiding in Oregon, you know, there was a point where I was running my own guide service and acting as an independent guide. But I was also filling my calendar up by working for other guides, you know, when I didn't have trips or maybe... Um, they had a permit on a, a particular river that, that I could go work at. So, um, you know, it's really just about filling up your, your calendar. I will say that, um, you know, business is booming. Uh, we can use the Bighorn River for, for an example, but, you know, um, uh, guides are in high demand there. So, so that's a spot where an independent guy uh, is probably going to get a lot of days under their belt. Um, Got it. But you also have to be realistic. You know, people are um, People are looking for... Uh, the right people to take their guests out and take care of them, you know, so um, you might need a little bit of training time. So maybe your first year, whether you're independent or working for somebody, you're not going to get as many trips as you're going to get, you know, the next year and the next year. So not too different than a lot of other jobs, you know, experience is, is the best building block. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't, I don't think there's a challenge in there. It's just different approaches, different approaches. It makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because I know, like, I know Trevor, you know, for example, Trevor, Trevor Mayushi, as an example, you know, he, he is, you know, he's following, he's, he's following his dream, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He's put it, he, he's getting everything done and just, uh, just starting his business and everything like that. So I, I figured I'd just ask because, you know, like, there's a lot of no, challenges out there, you know? There's also a side note to it and, and just real simple Agreed. stuff, like, you know, if you're in, and you want to move to, um, if you want to move to Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, you know, Alaska, um, maybe a, a, a ranch or a lodge is the better option because you're probably going to get housing or, or meals while you're there, things like that, you know. Um, so, so that's one to think about, you know, and, and uh, I have a lot of conversations with, with students because um, a lot of these you know, it, it's being realistic. A lot of these towns that are great fishing hubs all through the country are hard for us to live in. Right. You know, yes. Find how, even in housing. Um, so you, you got to be pretty, pretty adaptable, you know, um, and, uh, and figure it out. But I'll, I'll also back up and say that just, you know, no, no first opportunity is a bad one. Um, you're just, you're just trying to get some time and experience. Agreed. Well, Corey, I just want to say thank you for just, you know, coming into the, uh, coming in, on, onto the channel and having this podcast with me. Is, is there anything that you want to let everybody know the contact information, you know, um, anything else you want to let anyone know about the school, yeah, please yeah, feel free. For sure. Um, first off is thank you. Put a lot thank of work into this and, uh, I appreciate it. I remember you. Kind of proposing this when we were at the guide school yes and, and um man you get after it made it happen <laughs> so uh, i i appreciate it. i'm a I believe this is a win-win if we can get the word out to civilians and veterans both agreed that opportunities like this to you know, call it a trade school or, or call it a you know a, a fun fishing school whatever your goals are there there there's opportunities out there so um, you know, I, I appreciate that and appreciate you getting the word out. And, um, you know, as far as us, yeah, to, just to recap, we have, um, we do our classes in like three blocks a year, spring, uh, summer and fall. Spring is uh, March, early April. 
uh, summer for us is late May all through June. And then now we're looking ahead to fall and that's starting early September. Um, uh, there's no bad time to be on the bighorn, but, but fall has been, been pretty nice um, out there as far as some um, combination of weather and fishing. Now I say that and it'll, we'll get snowed on. Today, but, <laughs> the know, weather is crazy out there. Yeah. But yeah, we do have some good spots available um, in, in those weeks. And um, uh, send me an email, Corey, C-O-R-E-Y, at sweetwatertravel.com. Um, you, uh, you can get our phone numbers off of the website, and you can, you can get me on Facebook, Sweetwater Travel Company there, and um, Instagram, uh, same thing, Sweetwater Travel. It all comes to me. And I'd love, uh, I'd love a chance to, you know, answer any questions you have about the program and, and get you to Montana. Awesome. And just so you guys know, I do have uh, those links and I will add some more links uh, in the description on, under the podcast. Just click more. There should be some, um, the email for, for the company or for the school and uh, hit, uh, Corey's information for the Instagram. And I'll get, I'll get the links and I'll add them there from you, uh, Corey. That way people can, it will just facilitate awesome. things. Awesome. You know, and uh, pretty easy to- and, and I, right before before we uh we go and everything, I know that you don't you also offer uh another another uh class, right? Like uh, you have. Yeah. Would you yeah, elaborate do, more on that one? Class offering it twice a year, uh, one in the spring, one in the fall. The, or one for this fall is is booked up right now, and and it tends to book up a little quicker just because uh, we're only doing two a year. Um. It's um, it's really uh, a prerequisite that you've attended the first class before you come to the second one. So we should Got get it. you there, Paul, in spring of 2024. Yes. Uh, you'd have a great And it's a super fun, kind of an alumni class. Um, and um, we do it at a different location at our lodge on the Yellowstone. So it's a chance, um, it's a chance to put what you learned into action, but you know, I, at our lodge in the Yellowstone, you could potentially be fishing a few different bodies of water over the course of the week. And I think that's what really adds the advanced aspect to it. We do a day on the spring creeks up in Paradise Valley um, every time. And, um, yes. and uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm not being evasive on what we fish. I don't know yet. Because, you know, it's kind of water level and time of year, stuff like that. But right. the main Yellowstone and, and some of the small tributaries in that area. Um, so yeah, it's 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 also been a chance for us to to bring folks back to do another class and and now I you know we've kind of created a monster because all these especially the vets that come through the second class ask me what can I do next right you know, so we're, we're we're flirting with develop a curriculum for a third class in the mix down the road right awesome yeah Corey well I just want to thank you especially for collaborating with me on this podcast. And I hope that anyone out there, especially veterans that want to get into industry uh, to do a bit of research, right? And I hope all this information helps you guys um, to find a journey. You know, um, any questions, any information you guys might need, please contact Corey. Um, I will leave all his information in the description of this podcast once it's done. Some of it should be already there. Um, I just got to get a couple links, like I said earlier. But um. It was awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, I will uh, I will keep in contact with you and hopefully we can do another one in the near future. Love to. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Perfect. Uh, once again, thank you guys. And um, thank you once again, Corey. And before you guys leave, I want to show you guys the... Look, go to the YouTube channel and check out the new... The new film, My Fishing Guy School Experience at Sweetwater Guy School in Montana Bighorn, at the Bighorn River. It's in 4K. It is. Yeah. Make sure you guys check it out. This is a little snippet right here. Um, you, it, it, you can't go wrong. You know what I mean? You go out there, you have fun, and you catch big fish, you know? Unless you can't hook the fish, but they'll teach you that. That's the best part, right? So, yeah. So, once again, thank you very much. You guys have a blessed day. Corey, have a blessed day. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one. Peace. Oh. Thank you.
love and tight lines. If you want to learn how to tie this fly, make sure to join our first one YouTube live fly tying class this Thursday, 0323 at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. A giveaway of flies will be done at the end of each month. 